Hello, everybody, and welcome to Peace Finicism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. You can also find me on theconsciousresistance.com and theseedsofliberty.com. So today we have Jackie Ray uh, coming in from the state of Washington. Uh, she is a volunteerist anarchist and an unschooling mother of three boys, a uh, 25-year-old, 17-year-old, and a 15-year-old. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to a, a conversation about her unschooling style because there's so many different ways to do it. And uh, one of the most common questions people ask me is, um, you know, um, what's a typical day? And, you know, what curriculum do you use? And, you know, these kinds of things. And so and so they, they really want to hear different perspectives, right? So that's why I love um, interviewing various unschooling and homeschooling mothers. So, uh, yeah. Well, so, so, Jackie, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I, I see you. Um, I, I've been seeing you on all the time on Facebook, you know, liking and sharing my posts. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, sure. And you post a lot of great stuff yourself. Thank you. And, uh, it, it, you know, it's funny. I, it reminds me of this one meme um, where it's like, you know, you post um, something about, you know, government corruption or drone strikes or war and you get like, you know, three likes, four likes, one comment. <laughs> and then you post something about a cat video, right? Thousands. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> I think that people get um, uncomfortable with admitting where they stand on, you know, these things. So they, they don't want to show where they are on these things so they won't like them. But they'll like the cat ones because they're fun. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess uh, yeah, you're not putting yourself on the line. You don't have to defend your your perspective. Yeah, um, yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. I think people get defensive, and and it's indeed, it, and it's it's so sad. It's like the most, um, the, the, you know, you know the the uh, the issues that are that are having the most detrimental effects on the most people. Everybody is silent on. Exactly. You know, indeed, that's been my experience for sure. And uh, yeah, yeah, so I, I think it's. Um, I think it was Leonardo da Vinci. He said, um, um, "The best approval that you can give to tyrants is your si your silence." <clears throat> yes. <laughs> right. So that's uh, you I know agree. just just speaking up and talking uh, and sharing information. That's mm -hmm. you know one way you can uh, um, you know uh, express your disapproval of certain things. So mm -hmm. so before we get into your your unschooling philosophy, um, can you go into how you became a volunteer? How you um, stumbled along this philosophy? Absolutely. Um, it actually came from my unschooling. So when I became an unschooler, um, everything just kind of fell together for me um, because I became um, so anti-school um, that it just seemed, I don't know how to say it, but it just seemed really wrong to um, continue to advocate um, a political party, you know, and so um, with unschooling came my, um, I sort of slid over into libertarianism and, um, and, I, and I thought at first that um, it would be better to um, work the system being in it, you know, having someone speaking, you know, and working from inside, but I realized as I, you know, grew, that the that the corruption in is just it's just too much. There's just no way. So then I slid over into anarchy. I mean, it was just like, <laughs> and I was I was there. So um, yeah, it was it was really it just came from my um, my belief in not being a part of the system as far as school goes. It just didn't make any sense for me to you know advocate. A vote or you know stand behind any political party at all so I just I was there 100% so so what books uh, or personalities or, or youtubers um, like really influenced you regarding I guess I guess unschooling since that became first right and then volunteerism so right right uh, John Holt and um, John Taylor Gatto uh, I also um, read a lot of um, internet stuff by Joyce Federal. Um, yeah, I heard of her. Yeah. I think it's joyfullyrejoicing.com. It's yeah, um, yeah, her yeah. site. Yeah. And uh, she really, I mean, she really spoke to me. And um, and from there, um, I read uh, Alfie Cohn. 
and he really affected my um, my parenting philosophy. Um, we never were uh, spankers or um, <clears throat> used corporal punishment in any way, even when um, we were using curriculum and you know things like that. We just we always. Um, I, I tended I, I tended to go more towards like a timeout, but then I even realized that that was <clears throat> ineffective and kind of um, not cruel, but just well, it was mean kind of I guess. And, and and you know my little boy would cry even sitting in the corner, so I knew he you know that mm. that it was affecting him in a negative way. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't know that there was anything else other than that. I mean, there was either two choices: there was either spanking or uh, correction, and I didn't know to what extent you could use correction. Mm. So, and uh, yeah, and so um, that was it. And so I um, and then from from there, my um, parenting and um, the unschooling, I kind of gravitated to the anarchy thing. And um, Larkin Rose was a huge influence. Um, and uh, Stefan Molyneux, um, I, I watched a lot of his YouTube videos. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, as as I you know noticed that there was a lot of a uh, Facebook and um, and YouTube personalities. Then I found you, and I found um, Luis Fernando Mises, and um, oh gosh, there's so many people. I mean, that have affected me. There's so many awesome people out there. Cool. That's uh, <laughs> very very uh, pleased to be mentioned next to Larkin Rose and Molly. <laughs> <laughs> as an honor because yeah for me um um my my oldest is five and um and when he was just born um you know we, we didn't do the corporal punishment but um but yeah i guess you know you, you didn't know what to do so like you know cry it out not cry it out you know you, you just right. don't know you don't know and you get different different um suggestions from family members and um and then you know it, it, um so uh, so then, eventually, my, uh, my wife sent me a video, Stefan Molyneux, about uh, it's like um, the truth about uh, spanking, I think, and uh, and that's the mm -hmm. first time I heard of him, and so I heard that video. I'm like, this is awesome, this makes sense, and then I and then I got introduced to volunteerism through him, and uh, and, and yes, so everything else came after. He that. had <laughs> um, a mix of quality parenting advice and uh, volunteerism. Um, it all kind of just melded together, and that is a lot of the reason that I, I, you know, that's I was like, this makes a lot of sense. And so, um, the more that I listened to him, the more I wanted to listen, and I started to listen to Free Domain Radio and the podcasts, and and I watched his YouTube channels and read everything I could get my hands on, everything that he recommended, and it just kind of snowballed from there. And it was a lot of information, but it was a lot of great information, and I just in, I was immediately impassioned by it, and just wanted to you know get out there and share what I had you know learned for myself with others. Um, which is why <clears throat> I do what I do on. I, I basically do my um, activism on Facebook because I'm just trying to reach as many people as possible, um, much in the same way that I was reached. So, so do you think uh, since you become more active on Facebook, um, you know, sharing this kind of information, have people like uh, your friends looked at you differently or asked you certain questions or like have they engaged you at all? Absolutely. Um, I've actually lost more relationships than I've gained. Isn't that amazing? Um, yeah. And, you know, it, it's just, it's that, um, the way of thinking that, you know, if you're not, you know, hitting your kid, if you're not disciplining your kid um, in a way that the society thinks is the right way, then you have to be wrong. Or you're, you know, people have said that I was crazy. And, you know, because my um, teen boys, they don't know what it's like to be punished because they've never experienced it. They've mm. never had to. Mm. There's nothing that they've ever done that you know, that I've said, you know, I need to, you know, inv invoke my brand of discipline because you're doing something that I, you know, am not comfortable with. It's as simple as saying, okay, you know, this is something that makes me uncomfortable. We talk about it and it's over. I mean, either they continue on their path and make tweaks as needed or, you know, they find something else. It's, it's really a simple thing. You just talk to your kids and they, you know, they'll respect you and they'll listen you know they'll hear you out yeah yeah it's almost like um 
<laughs> you know, our message is like, you know, communication, love, trust, peace, you know, things like that. Nothing <laughs> what I consider revolutionary, but apparently to some people it is. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you know, treat your oh. kid treat your kid as an equal, right? Rather than as an inferior, like Right. You know? Right. And people just don't get that. They don't they don't see that as as um they they figure that you're just either letting them run wild and they're, they're going to walk all over you and mistreat you. And that's not the way it is. The difference in that is that um, I, I've ter- termed it as permissive parenting, but um, other people have talked to me uh, um, on that one as well. And um, I, I saw a little bit of a different perspective about that. It's not necessarily being permissive. It's just... Um, Allowing your kids to figure it out, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and you don't have to interfere. You can if it gets to a place where it's uncomfortable, but um, but you can let them suffer a natural consequence, you know, if it's mm-hmm. something that's, you know, I, I, yes, I want to keep them safe and, you know, away from dangerous things, but there are dangerous things out there. My son is driving now and, you know, he's out there on the roads and every day when he leaves, you know, I'm... I'm not scared, but I, you know, I do think about, you know, his safety when he, he leaves. And I always, you know, encourage him to be careful and not to text while he's driving and things like that. So, <laughs> you know, you just got to talk to him and let him know that you care. You can't just say, well, I'm afraid to offend them. I'm afraid to say something to them that will make them angry or upset with me. That's where that disconnect comes in and you start to see the rebellion and, uh, okay, you don't care, I don't care either kind of um, behaviors arising. Yeah, yeah, like uh, Hmm. yeah, we were talking before how uh, I think that trust is one of the most important things you can establish with your kid you know it's like you know people think no it's more important that they learn this they have to learn history they have to learn math they have to learn respect well yeah <laughs> none of that matters if they don't trust you right <laughs> because <laughs> exactly. not, nothing that you say they're gonna take maybe they'll give you a nod you know they give you a nod and then when yeah, they leave, yeah, they're yeah. gonna just do whatever they want to do behind their back behind your back but mm, if they trust yes. you and they want to talk to you about sensitive issues you know you can't get any better than that <laughs> uh-huh yes and you know my kids are at that age where, you know, sex is coming up a lot, you know, and, you know, there's girlfriends and, you know, I just want them to be safe and protected. And, Mm. you know, that's all that matters to me. Mm. It doesn't really matter to me, you know, what else happens. It's just, I want them to be safe and protected. That is the bottom line when it comes to it. Yeah, and I guess especially um, parents, <clears throat> parents with uh, with daughters, <laughs> because yeah. the daughter has so much more to uh, invest in if she does get pregnant. Uh huh. You know? And yes, absolutely. And I, you know, I see that myself. Like, like you know, when my daughter's older, you know, I want to, you know, I want her to feel comfortable with me or or with my wife. You know, that that she can talk about those things. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's definitely really scary. You know, like like you said, like the way I, I describe um, peaceful parenting is like. Um, you know, we protect our kids from serious harm. Like, you wouldn't let your kid run in the street. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't, right. let, you wouldn't let them walk off a cliff. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> you know, serious stuff. But there's there's stuff, there's, there's um, you know, like you said, natural consequences in life that happen and that are great learning tools. Like, for example, mm. you know, falling off a bike, right? You only learn how to ride a bike by falling, right? You only, right. You, know, you, you only learn about, you know, to respect fire by, by, you know, teaching kids about matches and maybe they get burned once or twice. And yes. they're like, all right. <laughs> I got to I got to be careful around fire, you know, or or even even knives, you know, Uh, a lot of parents are overly protective about knives and their kids. And and I've I've been meeting a lot of um, unschooling parents that uh, um, give their give knives to their kids like I like outdoors stuff. And um, Mm -hmm. and and it it really to most people, I could see that as as being shocking, but they're getting them used to it and and having them respect, um, you know, Uh potentially dangerous things. Absolutely. Uh, we're a hunting family, so we have lots of knives, lots of guns, you know. So um, my kids have been around that stuff since really young, and they've been they've been taught. They've been taught, you know, all, all the safety measures, and they've taken safety classes in order to get the permits that the government requires, you know. Mm. And, um, you know, so they, yeah, they definitely have been around it, and they know. 
you know, so um, a lot of people probably think that we're crazy or, you know, dangerous because we have, you know, guns and knives and our kids are, have been around them. But uh, I think it's important that um, people distinguish the difference between um, having those things in your home and just, you know, just having them versus getting in there with your kids and, you know, showing them what to do, what not to do and all the the safety precautions that need to be taken when you're handling them. Have you been approached by people uh, like when your kids are either with knives or guns and, and they and they they like um, scold you as a parent for allowing your children um, to have that? I personally haven't. Um, I'm um, I'm not really into it as much as the rest of my family is. Okay. Um, so um, typically when they go out, I don't go with them because I'm, I'm not into the hunting thing. <laughs> um, <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> targets and, you know, shooting at other things, that's, that's entirely different. But oh, okay. I'm, not, I'm not into the, you know, going out and hunting <clears throat> the animals type, type of thing. So um, I haven't personally. Um, and I, I think that most of the people around here, um, a lot of them – uh, are also into it. Um, cool. That, it, help, that helps. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's it, it's an area. Just this little town that we're in, in particular, that um, is more hunting centric, more mm -hmm. gun friendly. Um, if you wander outside of this town and you know you go um, north a little bit, there's a the 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 state capital uh, is more liberal and that's where you would find people that would be upset about the gun issue. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so, um, can you go into a little bit about your unschooling philosophy and, uh, you know, if, if, you know, if you have a curriculum or not, although I can, can gather, but yeah, but no. like, you can, if you can explain, you know, what your approach is to that and, uh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, we just basically have um, centered everything that we do around our children's interests. And so um, there has been a lot of um, traveling, exploring, um, hiking, a lot of outdoorsman type things. Um, my kids like to ride um, motorcycles, quads, um, wow. you know, like I said, the shooting thing, um, boats, fishing, you know, hiking, um, adventure type stuff. Um, also, um, my youngest son is into computers, so he just built his own gaming system from the bottom up. Um, wow. It took him about two days, so <laughs> apparently he he pretty much knew what he was doing with a little bit of dad's help. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's basically just you know, asking the kids, what do you guys want to do? And um, in the early days, it was a lot of art stuff, uh, mm -hmm. craft stuff, hands-on stuff. They built stuff. They they created their own skate park in my backyard. Um, they mm -hmm. built their own skateboard ramp. Wow. And cool. yeah, so they, they're into building. I mean, they know, they know how to do a lot of real world things um, versus, I mean, even music, guitars, and yeah, drums. We've had it all. We've mm. we've done a, a lot of things, and it's been a lot of fun. And so, no, there's no sitting down at the table with a book, um, <laughs> unless that's something that they're interested in. I mean, yeah, there's been books, of course, um, things that they're into that they want to learn about, um, you know. And and if th that's the only way to obtain the information, they'll you know go to a book, but. Um, I think they're they're a lot more hands on, and you know they like to get their hands into what they're doing. And so, um, like I said, um, they built a chicken coop, um, and they helped um, build on to our home. We have a, a family room that they they helped build, and nice. um, I, like I said, you know, cars. Um, there's no taking our cars to. Um, uh, an auto shop if if they can fix it they're going to fix it themselves and it's not going to just be one person out there they're all going to get out there and get in there and wow. and fix it yeah <laughs> so um and you know there's just the entire world is out there and you can learn from anything and everything and i just been very um 
proactive about making sure that they are learning um, skills that they can use in you know in their lives um, from an entrepreneurial ex perspective. Um, like I said, uh, our family um, works in you know we have a small business and everybody in the family works in it. So um, everybody has a job to do <laughs> from from that perspective. Um, there's so many things that they could do, and so they've worked um, from you know about 11 years old. Um, they started off, you know, working on the weekends and sometimes a little bit um, in the evenings, you know, for a few hours and, and kind of built up from there. And so, um, you know, they, they have a place in the business if that's what they want to do. Um, and we're not discouraging them from going out and finding, you know, other passions. Um, my middle son um, likes to build car stereos, so he's talked about getting a job um, just for fun, just putting together car stereos. So, yeah, cool. the learning never ends. It really doesn't. <laughs> yeah, what's funny is uh, when I when I talk to people about unschooling and uh, and they say, oh, you, so you're not going to put your kids in school, so they're just going to have free time, what, you're just going to let them play video games all day long. <laughs> 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 uh, and, uh, and what they don't realize is that, um, you know, most of the kids who – do things that they consider to be unproductive, like let's say watching TV or playing video games, um, are actually, in a way, um, ways of escape from um, a life that they're forced into, right? They didn't have yes. a choice whether or not they want to go to public school. They're forced into there. They're forced to learn this stuff, you mm -hmm. know, whether it's interesting or not, right? And uh, and, and after, you know, I, I don't know how many hours they spend, like, uh, being forced... And then once they have a little bit of a sliver of free time, they just want to get as yeah. far away from that as possible and do the most unproductive thing. Is that really a surprise to them? Like, uh, right? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> my kids. That's what I, that's what we talk about with people who don't that can't grasp that. Is that yeah? My kids have days where they that's what they want to do. They want to veg out and watch TV or play on the computer um, all day long. And I don't have a problem with it because they do a lot of other things. You know, they're working, they're working on cars, they're um, playing soccer. Both boys play soccer um, year round. One of them plays on a premier team in a Mexican league. Wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> nice. we're one of the only white people, but <laughs> <laughs> nice. he loves it. Break, breaking, and, breaking stereotypes, I like it. <laughs> yes, and, and you know, and it's great because um, I'm, you know, learning some Spanish along the way because it's something that, that I'm, you know, that I want. Cool. And so it's a learning opportunity for me as well. And so um, it's really cool. And, I, you know, we communicate with the parents and um, we do the best that we can on that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, some of them can't speak English, but others, you know, they, they, they got some of it down. And uh -huh. so we do the best as we can as far as me not understanding them and them not understanding me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, they, they play soccer and um, they have other interests other than watching TV or video games. So I've never, never worried, not for one minute, about them just wasting away in front of the TV or, you know, on games because, you know, there's just so much other stuff going on all the time that, mm -hmm. that it just is not, it wasn't ever a concern at all. Yeah. And, and the other thing I get asked is, um, so, I mean, don't you want your kid to be, have a nice job, have a nice car, have a nice house, <laughs> you know, oh. get a degree. All this stuff. <laughs> and, and I'm like, no, actually, <laughs> I want my son to be happy. That's, I think, the most important thing. Because if oh, he has those things and he's not happy, then they don't matter. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, you know, um, we're kind of in that world, too, because um, both my boys play soccer for our local high school. And so we see a lot of that. And we get asked by a lot by parents you know, are, aren't you worried that your son's not going to have a high school diploma? Aren't you worried that he's not going to go to college? You know, I'm just like, no, it, it, I'm not worried about it at all. Yeah. You know, I didn't finish high school. I don't have a high school diploma. I went on and got a GED and I did go to college for a little bit because 
that's what happened to me. I was hearing it constantly. You know, you need to go to, to college or you're not going to ever get a job and you're never going to be able to, because I was a single mother, yeah. a young single mother. And, you know, you need to get out there and go to college and get a job so you can support your son. And, um, and so that's what I thought I had to do. But I was miserable there. I was mm. absolutely 100% miserable, just like I was when I was in high school. And the whole entire reason that I disengaged because I was bored with the material, it, it, it had no, it, it, it did not interest me in one iota. I mean, some subjects, yes. Other things, I, was, I just shut it out, didn't want to hear it. And so I didn't listen, didn't, didn't study, didn't pass the tests. Mm. And, you know, I just, um, I totally disengaged from it. And my parents weren't the type to sit there and, you know, if you don't get this grade, you don't get that grade, um, then this is going to happen or that's going to happen. They just got mad. Mm. They got, they got pissed and just disconnected from me. Mm. So I figured, well, if they don't care, I don't care. (laughs) <laughs> and that's what happened, you know. And even if they did care, I think it would have come from a negative place. Right. So then I would have still disconnected anyway, you know. And that is really a big problem, I think, you know, in the, the parent-child connection and what expectations are of them as far as their education goes. Yeah, yeah. The other, the other thing I like to point out to people when they say, you know, don't you want your kids to get an education? What are you talking about? You're not going to send them to school. And I say, well, I mean, I think uh, when you're forced to learn something against your will, you can't call it education, right? Education is voluntary. You learn something. Yes. You, know, you want to learn. If, if you're forced to learn it, that's called indoctrination, right? It's a little uh-huh. bit different. Absolutely. <laughs> so we should get. I absolutely we should get, agree. We should get definitions <laughs> down first. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and I, I, I wrote a book, uh, or not a book, a, an article called um, uh, "Learning and Living Are Inseparable." Mm. And like you, like you said, you know, you know, if you're living, you're learning. It's it's, it's not confined to you know classrooms and a and a desk and a teacher right. writing on a chalkboard. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, that's really important. It's it's a it's a really important distinction I think that needs to be made um, as far as learning and education. I mean. Living and learning are synonymous. I think they they go together, and you can't do one without the other. It just doesn't happen. No, definitely so. not. So, yeah, yeah, and and you know, I, I've uh, the, the the most valuable things that I learned in in high school were stuff that I was interested outside of high school. <laughs> you yes, know, all the books and all like I'm into chess and piano, so all that stuff was outside of high school, and all the books on you know physics, cosmology, astronomy. And uh, holistic medicine, <clears throat> all that stuff was outside of philosophy, Eastern, all that stuff. Yes. Nobody in high school told me to read read this book or you're going to be tested on it. No, it's because I wanted to read it. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And it was things that, that interested you outside of what um, the, the school decided you needed to know to be able to live in the world. <laughs> you know, and these kids, you know, they go until they're 18 and then they're expected to know what they're going to do with their lives. The minute they're 18, their parents are ready to send them out the door <laughs> into the world. And, you know, they're so not ready. Yeah. I mean, you see it all the time. They're not there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're not being <laughs> equipped with the tools at all. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 the thing is, I don't think you can like like all these central planners. They try to like you say equip kids with the tools, but they can't because they don't know what the future is. Nobody knows what the future is. How do you yes. know what our kids are going to need in twenty years? Nobody does. And and it's like it's like I, I tell people who send their kids to public school. I'm like, imagine twenty years ago when the internet was just getting started. You know, parents had an idea. This is what you're going to need to know in twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> exactly because this is what you, if you want to get a job how many of them could have predicted google wikipedia <laughs> youtube you know there's any no of that. way how many of them could have predicted that and <laughs> and how much that has transformed our lives and changed everything you know um, indeed it, and it's, it's just amazing how these people they think they know what people need 20 years into the future what the hell you don't even know what you need next week or next month like well look how much um Technology has changed things and and things just are constantly, I mean, they're ever changing faster than ever now. And so, yeah, they're even, you know, 20 years ago saying 20 years from now, you know, mm. things now, 20 years from now, right. really, right. I mean, exactly. <laughs> there's no way. I mean, it, 
things are changing at such a rapid pace that there's no way that they could prepare. I mean, preparing is something that kind of goes along with living. And mm-hmm. like, you know, these kids that are going to school, to college and they're coming out with their these degrees and they're not able to find a job in that field because that field is becoming so quickly obsolete mm. that they can't you know there's nothing to do in that field and they have to continue to to learn in that field because it's evolving constantly mm. yeah. you know so <laughs> you know one of my favorite uh, videos i saw um, do you follow peter schiff at all he's a gold silver guy. oh yeah yeah <laughs> okay so he did a video down in new orleans and he was interviewing different people working like, you know, people working in like the taxi cabs, bouncers, you know, street vendors. <laughs> and he asked each one of them, um, did you go to college? Yes. What's your degree? Um, and they're like um, business or liberal arts or women's studies or medieval history. <laughs> How much debt are you in? $50,000. <laughs> and, oh and they're street vendors and bouncers. And uh, it's so sad. <laughs> Very. And that's what we're preparing. That's what we're preparing our kids for. It's like, it's like yeah. we're just preparing them to go into debt. You know, that's all. Like everybody's true. in debt. You must go into debt. Everybody, you know, it's what everybody. It's true. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe what what um what I you know even in my very early twenties what I thought we were supposed to do, you know, you're supposed to buy this house and you're supposed to have credit cards and you're supposed to have a car and a car payment and, you know, you're supposed to go out work nine to five. Right, right. And, and I really, I believe that that was all there was mm. because I had so little exposure to, you know, anything really other than that small little box of, you know, you learn this, you do this and that's, you know, that's it. That's all there is. And, and luckily, you know, it, there's an amazing world of opportunity out there, you know, even, you know, more now than there was back then. So, um, you know, I definitely don't worry that my kids are going to struggle, you know, because they didn't have the modern lifestyle, you know, that the society thinks everyone should have, um, that we've, you know, taught them that, um, you don't have to, you know, buy a house anymore. And, you know, and my, you know, my goal is just to say, you know, here, here's this house, you know, we made the mistake of buying it all those years ago, you can, you know, do whatever you want with it. And, you know, either sell it, live in it, um, whatever, you know, Mm. and, you know, I don't want them to to worry about those kind of things because like, where you live is is really not that big of a deal, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I want our family to, you know, stay close and um, not be like, you know, some of my family, which is, you know, clear across the country. And, you know, I don't even really know them because, you know, my family came out here from Ohio um, when I was about nine years old. And so away from all of the other family. So we were clear across, you know, the country from them. Yeah. And and I would rather stay close. I, I mean, if they want to travel and go around, you know, the world, do whatever they want to do, I just want to stay connected, you yeah, know. Right. And Versus... And- and, not and it, caring, you know. And it's easier more than ever now to stay connected, right, than it was yes, before. Yes, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, Skyping. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, like, that kind of brings to mind, you know, talking about family and, uh, you know, parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles is uh, mm-hmm. some people say, you know, you have to respect your elders. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, really, oh. I really hate that expression. Yes. Because, because it's like, uh, <clears throat> it's like being a family member, um, that's not an achievement. Right. It's just it's just it's our reproductive capability. It means it means you had kids or you were born and that 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 has no. um, You didn't get to choose your family. (laughs) Yeah, you didn't get to choose your family that didn't that didn't result from any individual action that you took. (laughs) So why should that deserve respect? See, I don't (laughs) I don't respect family because they're family. I respect. I respect like principles and actions. Right. Right. (laughs) If they've earned that title, then. Right. Yeah. Then absolutely. But if like, you know. (laughs) <laughs> in my family <laughs> there's been a lot of you know struggles and like with my brother and so um there's been this estrangement and you know you can only do what you can do and and I'm not going to um force a relationship that you know doesn't want to be you know what I mean mm. 
No, no, yeah, yeah, definitely, you definitely can. I mean, uh, you know, you, I don't want to cre <coughs> create enemies, um, but but you know, you're gonna speak your mind and speak what you believe is the truth, and you're gonna live by your principles, and mm -hmm. hopefully teach your kids to to be you know empathetic and compassionate and moral and loving mm -hmm. people. Absolutely, you know? and that's Absolutely. That, that, you know that's how I think we we ultimately can change the world is we start with ourselves. And then our kids, right? You know, mm -hmm. and, and even your kids, you know, you, you can barely control your kids. Who can control their kids? Nobody. I mean, most people can't even control themselves. <laughs> so how do you expect to control your kids? <laughs> so exactly. It, it, it really focuses on focuses on yourself first. So focus on the individual. That's what I tell people. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's that's good because, you know, it's just it that control thing really is prevalent in our culture, you know, in our society um, as as parents, it's like you you come from a place of fear and you think that if you can't get your kids in line, you know, with what what uh, society, you know, says is the way your kids should should be as far as like, you know, respecting the elders and, um, you know, just <laughs> it's just it's so, there's so much. It's just it's crazy. I mean, to think of, you know, what all um, the kids are young people especially are focused on as being, you know, nasty and out of control and mm -hmm. just, you know, and, and it's because the adults out there are not giving them respect. They're not modeling respect. And when it is, when there is respect, it's fake. Yeah. And you can tell, you mm -hmm. can tell it's not genuine, you know, it's, it's, it's fake. And they can see that a mile away. Young people can read that and they know, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, they're just going to say, well, pfft, you know, F you, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. and yeah. it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's because they're not getting real genuine interaction. They're not given, you know, that real respect that they deserve. So you know, if they're not given it, how are they going to give it right. themselves? Yeah. So, you know, I uh, so my kids are five and three, right? And uh, mm -hmm. when, when people see me interact with them, they, they see that, you know, I I don't I, I I'm not gonna say I don't yell. I try not to yell because it's like some things some things get passed down from from your parents and you just like, right you just, it's like you see you're a mirror of your parents and i'm like uh -huh. i gotta constantly catch myself calm down lower your voice <laughs> you know you don't want them to yell so then you don't yell right you, uh -huh. like, like you said you got to be a good example right so i'm always trying to calm down and talk to them calmly <clears throat> and 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 explain things like you know why you're unhappy about something and, and just talk to them right and and then people um talk to me like you know why are you doing that you know don't you see your child's trying to control you you know she, he's controlling you by, <laughs> by you giving oh. in to, he's, <laughs> and, and in my mind i'm thinking no it's not about control you know it's about you know communication as a peer as an equal you know um and <clears throat> i think uh uh you know i heard it some I said somebody said that uh, you know you treat, treat your children like you would uh, like a guest in your house like a neighbor you know like like <laughs> your neighbor drops something on the floor you're not going to yell at your guest or your neighbor <laughs> right. 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 It's the same thing with, you know, your spouse or your your partner. Um you're not going to talk to them that way, you know. You you're going to give them, you know, loving talk, you know. You're not going to be all, <laughs> you know, <laughs> get that or something. Why don't you answer the door? Right. You know, I know that that does happen in some relationships, but that doesn't happen in mine. And so, you know, we don't our kids are and we just we're we're all you know sarcastic and smart ass to one another and <laughs> so we have our own little love language that that goes on but mm. that you know that that happens in a house with you know teenage boys <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so <laughs> we 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 have our own little love language and somebody else might hear that and go god you know <laughs> but they they would have to know you know us as a family unit and how we how we are in yeah. order to you know to not think that we were all crazy but you yeah. know as long as we know you know when yeah. we're talking to one another that that it's not serious then yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not a big deal so <laughs> yeah the, the other funny thing uh when i when i tell people how i i try to reason with my kids and talk to them calmly as peers you know they say well why are you talking to your three-year-old like that you know she doesn't understand she's only three <laughs> Uh, <laughs> want to make a bet? <laughs> Which is, well, yeah, yeah, that that's one part of it. But then the other part of it is, <clears throat> even if she doesn't understand, 
why are you going to like talk down to her just because you think she doesn't understand? How is she going to learn to reason if you're not reasoning with her? Right. <laughs> like, when do you think exactly. you're going to start? You know, it's like, it's, just, <laughs> it's like, it's like, because my daughter, because my infant doesn't speak English, should I not talk English? <laughs> <to my infant? laughs> you know, exactly. It doesn't make sense. It, it makes so much sense. But, you know, it's not, it's not common sense, I guess, <laughs> with <Yeah>. people. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. It's it's definitely not common sense because you, know, <laughs> you you get that so many so many times from people. Um, even my mother in law, she's um, Hungarian. She grew up in communist Romania, oh, so you can imagine the amount of uh, authoritarianism that she grew oh, up in. Um, yeah, and my wife too. My wife grew up in in communist Romania, and and she she came here when she was twelve, uh, ninety four, and and communism fell in eighty nine. <clears throat> so, so yeah, so so she had a, a pretty interesting transition to here. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's, there's so much difference. Like when I go over to my mother-in-law's house, she lives close by and, uh, and, and, and the way she talks to my kids is, uh, yeah, very much like an inferior and, and I don't like that. And I've gotten to frequent arguments with her and I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I don't parent, like we don't talk to our kids like that. We don't yell, calm, lower your voice, <laughs> Yeah, you know, <laughs> that, that is definitely hard when, um, you're interacting with other family members that, uh, do things differently mm -hmm. than you would. Yeah. Um, especially like when my kids were younger and, and there would be things that were said or done in a way that, that I was uncomfortable, <laughs> very uncomfortable with. Yeah. And it's really hard. And you try, you try to talk to people, um, about ways that they can change, you know, their interactions with kids. And, um, you know, it's just, they don't want to hear it. They, they don't, you know, they don't, they're not welcoming, um, that advice unless they ask for it kind of mm. thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's one of the struggles that, that I've come up against is, um, you know, having those parenting differences, um, within, you know, the family and, you know, they do things their way and, you know, and then you, you, you kind of nervous about leaving the kids, um, there for an afternoon, say if they're going to play or something, and um, you're worried about what's going to be said. And there were a few instances where my boys came home and they said they were uncomfortable and they didn't want to, you know, go back or whatever because um, it was a lot more of an aggressive environment than what they were used to. So, um, you know, and, and you just talk to them and you, you just, you, you tell them in the best terms, you know, that you can, that that's not how you do things at home. And I, I realize, you know, that they're in your home right now and you, you do things your way. Yeah. Um, but just keep in mind that um, my my boys are a little bit more tender spirited and you might, you know, upset them if, you know, you're too rough with them if you're if you're screaming all the time, you know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So. Yeah, yeah, that is that is difficult, and uh, yeah, I've definitely encountered that when I when I started speaking uh, <coughs> more against uh, corporal punishment, and mm. you know, some people have the argument that well, um, there's a difference between abuse and discipline, right? Mm. And what mm -hmm. I do is discipline. Oh yeah, I've it's, heard that argument it's, plenty. It's, <laughs> it's not abuse, right? And I mean, I mean, we, I guess you can say some people say, well, when I hit my kid, it's I do it out of love, and I'm calm, and I'm not angry. I'm like, well, even if you're hitting your kid out of love, you're still establishing that you're the authority and you're the superior and they're the subject, right? And, so and you're bigger than them and <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> everything. <laughs> right. There's always the imbalance of power and and my goal is always to get um, get rid of that dif power differential, you know? Because, yeah, like you said, I'm, I'm bigger, taller, stronger and and that doesn't make me right. <laughs> that just means I'm, I was living on the earth for longer than they have. Right. You know, that doesn't, that doesn't make what I say have any, any right, you know, any more right or, or it doesn't make violence any more um, uh, acceptable, you know. So, <laughs> but yeah, so, so I, um, yeah, I'm constantly, I'm constantly counting that, um, that uh, clash with my family because, uh, actually, I saw a great, a great quote recently and uh, somebody posted, um, it says, uh, when I, when I get the ruler, um, you'll know that I'm going to, teach you something about I saw that wasn't that, yeah. that beautiful when I when I get when I get the belt it's it means I'm getting dressed <laughs> when I when I lift right. my, when I lift my arm it means I'm gonna hug you you know so <laughs> uh -huh. not hit you <laughs> right right like like you know we, we we have all these um expectations that you know because our our parents and grandparents fought, uh, you know parented a certain way that we have to parent exactly the same you know if we deviate that mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're something wrong with us <laughs> mm-hmm yep
Yeah. And, and, and you know, I, I firmly believe that that statism starts at home. Oh, yes. You know? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's um, another thing is um, my, my husband isn't um, an anarchist. And so, um, you know, that we have discussions, um, you know, about our differences, our political, you mm -hmm. know, differences and beliefs and, um, and things like that. And so, um, not really arguments. I don't think he, um, he's not like totally against my views, mm -hmm. but, um, he just doesn't see how, you know, it can, how it can be mm -hmm. applied in life, you know, how it could actually mm -hmm. exist, how our society could exist peacefully, um, without people mm -hmm. to keep, those crazy ones under control kind of thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Th yeah. Those arguments are kind of interesting. Like, you know, they're, they're always searching for that, um, you know, that special situation where you need government. Right. Right. You know, what if there's a rapist, what if somebody blasting into your home, what right. if there's a mass murder, you know? Right. And, 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 you, and oftentimes I, I, uh, I say, well, does that happen today? And who does the most murder <laughs> today? Right. Is it individuals, psychopathic individuals, or is it people acting under the name of government? Right. Um, mil military and police. So, so any, any, um, uh, crime that, that the individual perpetrates can never ever be equal to what can be achieved when acting under authority or government ever Indeed. <laughs> which is what people a lot of people kind of forget you know and and the other thing i tell people is that it, it doesn't really matter like in the future you know how can we apply a stateless society to this situation that's it. it doesn't matter all all we're saying is that you know I think people should have voluntary interactions and I think people should be free and I'm not going to force my opinions onto other people and I don't want them to force their opinions onto me. And that's it. If we don't do that, we're cool. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's very, it's, it's very simple. It's like you don't have to get all deep and philosophical and go into these detailed convoluted arguments about you know, <laughs> what, what would happen in this situation, what defense, you know, private defense company would, would pop up and how would they dis dispute resolution? <laughs> <occur>? <laughs> you know, to me, that that's just details. You know, that's not really mm -hmm. necessary. Like, like we can be moral and empathetic individuals in our own lives <clears throat> and, and, and be, like you said, always be the example, be the model that other people want to emulate. Exactly. And, you know, that is, that's all I um, care about when, when I'm sharing, you know, my view it, um, is just to try and, and reach people from that perspective, that, that, um, that peaceful, loving place that, um, that isn't coercive or wanting someone else to force you to do my will, you know, or your, you know, the other person's will making me do, you know, what they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's, that's the only point that, that I want is, is that everyone, I want everyone to experience freedom mm -hmm. and, you know, peace and, and love. And, you know, from, from a place that, um, there's no one, um, looming over you with a threat, mm -hmm. you know, the threat of jail or whatever it may be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, when lovemaking is not, it's not consensual, it's called rape, right? When, when, right. when charity is not consensual, it's called theft. Although, you know, we kind of think it's different if you call it taxation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, if the government's uh, behind it with a gun, then, then it's okay. But, um, you know, if it's just some guy with a gun pointed to you telling you, give me your money, then right. it's robbery. Right, yeah. right, right, right. So it's just, uh, yeah, we call legal plunder, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, it's a constant double standard and the hypocrisy that we're constantly surrounded by. And uh, and like you said, you know, when I post stuff, um, you know, you, a lot of people, I guess, who who disagree, they uh, they come at you with, um, <clears throat> you know, they, they counter your arguments, but sometimes they even come at you with insults and ad hominem attacks and things like that. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and it's so sad. And I, uh, I, I make sure I don't respond in the same way um, because right. it, hard not to, but <laughs> yeah, it's hard not to. I know, <clears throat> but you, you just can't. It's like it's like, uh, you know, one of my favorite Socrates quotes is uh, when the debate is lost, slander is the tool of the loser. 
Right. Yeah, because you can't you can't get anywhere with them anyway. Even if even if they're if you're coming back at them, you know, in the same way that they attacked you to begin with, right. you're never going to get anywhere with them. So it, it's pointless to you know right. to engage in that manner. So you kind of have to come at them with logic and love. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah, just, same thing. Same thing that, that when I talk to my kids, calm down, talk mm-hmm. rationally. You know, express your Breathe. express <laughs> ex- express your your you know your perspective and. If they if they accept it, they're okay. If not, then fine. <laughs> but mm-hmm. there's only so much you can do for people. But <laughs> true, true. <clears throat> but but um. All right. So so is, is there anything else you want to uh, finish up with before we uh, sign off? No, I think we covered just about everything that I wanted to talk about. <laughs> so okay. So before we leave, um, I, I like to ask this of a lot of people. Um, for, first of all, um, what's your favorite quote? And uh, actually, we'll start with that. So, so, what's your favorite quote? Like the any, anything you know, on any any topic. Um, I I always like the quote, um, "No pain, no gain." Okay. And I think that that's because, um, I mean, you don't always have to have pain to have gain. Mm-hmm. But I think that when we walk through things that are that are uncomfortable, there there's always. Uh, a better lesson to be revealed, mm. you know. Right. So, right. Um, I I just feel like, um, in a sense, we kind of do have to experience the things that are uncomfortable to to find the more beautiful things. Cool. So so basically, uh, um, you, you're talking about the nat- natural consequences, right? To to mm-hmm. actions, right? <clears throat> right. That, 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 I guess corporal punishment would be adding artificial negative yeah, consequences. That's- that is a that is a pain that is inflicted by the hand of someone else right. versus you know um, experiencing something um, that might be uncomfortable only to to get past that because we always get past it right. to reveal yeah. something more beautiful. I, something- I had I had a, uh, a, a female a Filipino worker. Um, she was a physical therapist, and she told me when she was um, when she was probably like a teenager or maybe ten ten years old. <coughs> She uh, she was running on a gravel, uh, you know, where there's gravel, and she tripped and fell, and she scraped her face and got all bloody, right? And, she, and you know, she was in pain and everything. And then when she got home, her parents got mad at her and was, I guess, I, I don't know if they hit her. They probably did hit her <clears throat> for, oh. saying, for saying that you're a girl and you have to take care of your face. Oh, wow. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so talk about... Uh, Adding additional shame and uh, yeah. negative, negative, you know, unnecessary negative. Out of something that you can't control. Right, like like she like <laughs> she wanted to fall. Right. Right. That's that's insane. Or 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 like you know, um, you know, hitting your child for burning their hand on the stove. <laughs> you know, right. It's, it's so stupid. Uh, um, I think the lesson was already learned, and that's what happens a lot of times is that um, kids will do something. And there will be a lesson already, a natural consequence to, to what they've done. Mm. And then the parent goes behind again mm. and applies mm. another lesson, another <laughs> another layer of pain over top of, of whatever happened to them. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've even told my husband that before where um, something was going on with my son. And I said, look, you know, he, he's already learned. Mm. You don't need to, you know, you don't need to chew his butt, you know, now he... Mm. I think that, you know, you can come back later and talk with him about about it, but we don't need to, you know, we don't need to get on him yeah. about the choice that he made because I think he's already learned the lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, kids are, you know, kids are astute, astute and they, they pick up on these things and there's, mm-hmm. yeah, there's no need to drive drive the point home in any right. way. Right, 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 right. Exactly. So, so before I let you go, I just want to ask you a question. Um if you encounter somebody who's interested in unschooling or homeschooling and, uh, you know, is thinking about doing it, but unsure, what would you tell them to really like get them, uh, thinking about it and try to, you know, persuade them? Um, I think the most important thing to consider when, um, when deciding to, to, um, do unschooling is, um, think about, uh, about what happens in, a school setting. I mean, what are the things that that are most prevalent? I think that, you know, we see a lot of bullying and a lot of, you know, um, 
coercive behavior to where kids feel like they um, they have no place if they they don't fit in. And so I think that it's important to to think about those things and about um, what your child might be going through um, if you're you know really thinking about it. Um, and you know, and not every kid is going to experience those things, or they're they're not going to maybe they won't say that they are, even if they are. Um, but um, even for for parents who who haven't even had their child in a school setting, um, those are those are the things that I thought about when um, when I was really you know um, thinking about it. You know, even from from day one, like when they were four years old or whatever, um, I was thinking about. Um, what I and what I saw others experience mm -hmm. in school, like on the bus, at the playground, um, at the bus stop, all those places, the things that were said and, you know, kids can be so mean and, you know, they're going to experience those things out in the world anyway. But I think that it comes from teachers and, you know, and, and in the classroom, you know, it's just, it's almost, it's just, it seems like it's unbearable anymore. And, you know, and I've heard a lot of people um, talking about personal experiences and how, you know, they don't really have any friends and they just go through the motions every day. And that's something that you don't, you know, you don't want your kids just to go through the motions every day, mm. you know. And you want them to, to experience the things that they love every day. Right. Yeah, so I saw a great meme uh, related to that is, which, which said, um, you know, you see a picture of a classroom and it says, forced association is not socialization right it's not <laughs> right and and uh you know people say well you know they might get bullied they might get picked on but that's the real world and they gotta they gotta deal with it they gotta get <laughs> you know it's like it's like well it's not a natural situation they're forced to be there that's not the real world <laughs> in right the, in the exactly. real world they can choose to dissociate right <laughs> yes yes and and you know and, and i think that's the that's the biggest thing to consider when you're considering unschooling it or homeschooling even is just um, is just think about that force of association and and um, and and your experiences with it and even if you had this great wonderful 100% positive experience yourself um, not every kid is going to have that experience and even if you had the worst experience you, you have to kind of put yourself in the middle of of both um, spectrums and and figure out what you want you know for your kids and and you know for me it was a no-brainer I was like well that's it I'm I'm not you know and then I let them decide as they got older um, whether or not they wanted to stay home or go and you know they had a lot of friends that were um, in the system and so um, they uh, they were um, you know they were they were around kids and stuff so they 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 knew what was going on there, and so they they decided for themselves that that they didn't want that. So yeah, yeah, and uh, I'm just gonna I'll just say this before we end that um, my three year old so they they watched you know some cartoons on their iPads and iPod and and uh, and and there's a lot of cartoons that that depict going to school. It's really amazing how much how much they inject that into cartoons for for kids, you know. Right. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> And my my son kind of understands how it's not realistic. Like, and I keep asking, and I keep asking, "Do you want to go to school?" And my, and my, and my son says, "No, he's five years old, right?" And then, and then my <laughs> daughter, she's like, "Yeah, I want to go to school." And, and, I, and I said, "Why?" She's like, "It's fun." And then, and, and then my son, they only make it look fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then my son, and my son was like, "No, Serena, you you can't play iPod. You can't go outside. You can't go right. to the park. You can't. You can't. <laughs> you know, you can't do all this stuff that you want." He's got to figure it out. <laughs> that's great so it's important to uh explain to them how it really is and it's not just you know right. funny funny games you have to sit down and my, 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 my son's like you have to sit down you have to listen to the teacher you have to write things down and read things <laughs> yeah. you know so <clears throat> and you can't you can't see mommy and daddy oh yeah so, mm -hmm. so it's very important you can't for play when you want to you have to do it when they tell you to right and that's right. it's not for a very long period of time from what i understand <laughs> yeah 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 so yeah, so it's important to get that done uh, in the beginning. So, uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Jackie. It was a wonderful conversation. Yes, uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm honored. No problem. Really appreciate getting uh, different perspectives on unschooling. I think it helps uh, a lot of families who are considering it. So uh, you need, we need more Absolutely. and more. We need more and more families, uh, you know, parents speaking out about it to to, mm -hmm. to, feel, to help them feel more comfortable with the idea. So. Uh, 
Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, so if anybody wants to uh, help out my show, uh, you can donate through PayPal, uh, Bitcoin, or, or Patreon. The links are in the description uh, to, these, to the video. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Uh, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network and thusseedsofliberty.com and theconsciousresistance.com. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.